Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today not merely as a speaker but as a believer in the extraordinary power that resides within each and every one of us. The power to shape our destiny, to transcend challenges, and to cultivate a positive attitude in a world that often appears steeped in negativity. Let me begin by acknowledging that the world we inhabit is indeed a complex tapestry of experiences. There's no denying that negativity, challenges, and setbacks abound. Turmoil, strife, and difficulties may seem ever-present. Yet, within this whirlwind of chaos lies the remarkable potential to sow the seeds of positivity, resilience, and unwavering hope. Have you ever encountered someone who exudes positivity regardless of the circumstances? Someone who remains steadfast, composed, and optimistic even in the face of adversity. That is the power of a positive attitude, a force so compelling that it can not only transform your own life but also the lives of those around you. So, how do we cultivate this rare but invaluable attitude in a world that often bombards us with negativity? The answer lies within us, within our choices, our thoughts, and our actions. It begins with understanding that our attitude is not dictated by external circumstances but by the lens through which we perceive and respond to these circumstances. The first step in cultivating a positive attitude is to take charge of our thoughts. Our thoughts are the seeds from which our attitudes grow. We must consciously nourish our minds with positivity, thoughts that uplift, inspire, and motivate us. Remember, what you focus on expands. So, focus on the good, on the possibilities, on solutions rather than problems. Next, let's explore the power of gratitude. Gratitude is a game changer. It shifts our perspective from lack to abundance, from despair to hope. Every day, take a moment to acknowledge the blessings in your life. Whether it's the air you breathe, the relationships you cherish, or the opportunities you have. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude and witness how it transforms your outlook. Furthermore, surround yourself with positive influences. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose your companions wisely. Seek out individuals who uplift, encourage, and inspire you to be the best version of yourself. Distance yourself from negativity. Be it negative people, news, or environments that drain your energy and dampen your spirits. Moreover, embrace challenges as opportunities for growth. Understand that setbacks are not roadblocks but detours guiding you toward resilience and strength. Learn from your experiences, both positive and negative, for they are the building blocks of your character and wisdom. Remember, champions are not made in the comfort of easy victories but forged in the fires of adversity. But most importantly, take responsibility for your attitude. You have the power to choose how you react to circumstances. Your attitude is not determined by what happens to you, but by how you respond to what happens. Own your attitude, nurture it, and let it be the guiding light that illuminates your path through life's twists and turns. Now, let's delve into the undeniable connection between a positive attitude and the attainment of wealth. The two are not only intertwined, but intricately woven together in the fabric of success and prosperity. Your attitude is the compass directing the course of your life. It's the lens through which you perceive the world, interpret circumstances, and navigate challenges. How you respond to the ebb and flow of life's currents dictates the outcomes you experience. A positive attitude isn't merely a whimsical outlook or a fleeting emotion. It's a mindset, a way of life, a conscious choice to approach every situation with optimism, resilience, and a firm belief in the possibility of success. And oh, how it influences your journey to wealth. Wealth, in its truest sense, isn't merely the accumulation of material possessions or vast sums of money. It encompasses abundance in all aspects of life, financial prosperity, emotional well-being, fulfilling relationships, and personal growth. And a positive attitude acts as a catalyst, propelling you toward this holistic wealth. Consider this. Your thoughts are seeds. What you plant in your mind will grow and bear fruit. A positive attitude cultivates a fertile ground where seeds of ambition, determination, and possibility thrive. It fosters a mindset that sees opportunities in challenges, learning in failures, and success in setbacks. When you radiate positivity, you attract similar energies into your life. Opportunities gravitate toward individuals whose mindset aligns with success.
Successful entrepreneurs and visionaries didn't reach their pinnacle by dwelling on limitations. They dared to dream big, persisted through failures, and believed in the possibilities despite the odds. They possessed an unshakable positive attitude that fueled their actions and propelled them for their financial aspirations. Moreover, a positive mindset fosters a habit of continuous self-improvement. You become open to learning, seeking knowledge, and honing your skills. In today's ever-evolving world, adaptability and continuous growth are paramount. Those with a positive attitude embrace change, view it as an opportunity for growth, and capitalize on it. But let's not overlook the impact of mindset on financial decisions. A positive attitude steers you away from impulsive or fear-driven choices. It helps you make prudent, calculated decisions about investments, expenditures, and long-term financial planning. You're less likely to succumb to panic during market fluctuations when your mindset is rooted in positivity. In conclusion, a positive attitude isn't a magical wand that instantly conjures wealth. It's not about wishful thinking or ignoring reality. It's about consciously choosing how you respond to reality. It's about cultivating a mindset that propels you forward despite the challenges, setbacks, and uncertainties that life throws your way. If you desire wealth in its fullest sense, start by nurturing a positive attitude. It's the cornerstone upon which you can build a life of abundance, success, and fulfillment. Cultivate optimism, embrace challenges as opportunities, surround yourself with positivity, and let your unwavering belief in possibilities guide you toward the wealth you seek. Remember, your attitude determines your altitude. So, soar high with positivity and watch as the riches of life unfold before you. Thank you. But now, let's make some notes on setting goals. The promise of the future is an awesome force. While we look back for experience, we must also look forward for inspiration. What gives us the inspiration to get up in the morning, to do our jobs, to learn skills, and to develop all that we can possibly be? It's the promise of the future. It can be so powerful that it can overwhelm any adversary or difficulty. Here's a key phrase. Reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Reasons make the difference in your appetite and zest for taking on challenges, doing the job, and becoming successful. Shelf said, if you have enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. You can get through the most difficult day. You can overcome the most unbelievable challenges if you have enough reasons. So he said to me, if you haven't got a list of your goals, run, it's probably because you don't have enough reasons. He said, I'm sure since I've met you, you have enough intelligence, you have enough good health, and you have all of those things working for you. But here's what you must work on now, to have enough reasons looking into the future, developing reasons. Now, here's a note to me. It's important to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people let the past pull them back. The past can be like gravity, pulling you back. Some people live in the past, in the darkness, in the mistakes, in the discouragement. So we don't want the past to pull us back. Make this note. Dreams and goals can become magnets. The stronger the goal, the higher the purpose, the more powerful the objective. The stronger this magnet is that pulls you in that direction. Not only do your goals and objectives pull you in that direction, but they also pull you through. They pull you through all kinds of down days, through difficult times. They'll pull you through some winter of your life. Some people get lost in the confusion of the day simply because their goal is not bright enough to pull them through. Next, it's goals that drive us to take advantage of the spring. Why would the farmer put the plow in the ground in the spring if he couldn't see the vision of a harvest when the summer is finished? Is it possible to see the finished harvest? And the answer is yes. We do that simply by faith. Faith is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. So here's what we want to do in our goal setting session. Start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, where you would like to go, the person you would like to be, and see if you can't get a better picture of the finished objective. If you don't see yourself there, see yourself in possession of your dreams. To greatly influence your future, your future must be well planned. There are two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension, the other with anticipation. Guess how many people face the future with apprehension? Why? They don't have it well designed, and without really thinking about it, they have probably bought someone else's view of how to live. 
Yeah, you will face the future with anticipation when you have planned a future you can get excited about. When you have designed your future results in advance. In this way, the future will capture your imagination. It will exert an enormous influence on you. To design your future, you must have goals. Well-defined goals are like a magnet. They pull you in their direction, and the better you've defined them, the harder you've described them, the harder you work on them, the stronger they pull. They pull you through all kinds of difficulties, too. Without goals, it is easy to let life deteriorate to the point where you're just making a living. It is not difficult to get trapped by economic necessity and settle for existence rather than substance. We all have a choice. We can either make a living or design a life. Now, take some time to actually start designing the next 10 years of your life. We're going to start setting your goals. Goal setting is one of the most important skills to develop if you want to design your future. I'm going to give you enough homework not only to keep you busy for the rest of your life, but also to help you create the kind of life you may have always dreamed about living, but never believed possible. So let's get on with it. The sooner you exert the discipline, the sooner you will be enjoying the results. Once the results start to come, believe me, you won't mind the hard work and discipline it's going to take. Now, get a sheet of paper and at the top of it write the words, Long Range Goals. I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to jot down the answers. If you don't have paper and a pen handy, follow along with me now, anyway. Just listen, and later, listen again when you can write down your ideas. After I've asked the questions, which is the first part of this exercise, you can stop the tape and work on your answers. Title this part of it, now workshop, and under, workshop, I'm going to ask a series of questions. It's going to serve as a model so that you can teach this to your children. You can teach it in classes. You can teach it anywhere under the workshop. Now, here's the first question. What five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of? Let's take some credit before we go to work on the future. We've accomplished some things in the past. Let's give ourselves credit for that. What five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of? So make a note of that question, and then I want you to do the exercise. Make a list of five things that you can think of that you've already accomplished that you're proud of. Next question. What do you want in the next 10 years? I want you to make a list of at least 50 items. Now, this is not what you think you can get. This is what you want. If everything fell into place and you could have anything you wanted in the next 10 years, what would that list be? Little things, major things, insignificant things, doesn't matter. Just make the list. To help you get started with your list, consider these questions. What do I want to do? What do I want to see? What do I want to be? What do I want to have? Where do I want to go? And what would I like to share? Now, with these thoughts and starter questions in mind, answer the basic question. What do I want within the next one to 10 years? See how many things you can write down. At this point, don't take the time to describe in detail everything you want. This is the time for you to let your thoughts pour out, to write fast, and to abbreviate. Make the list as long as you possibly can. Try to write down at least 50 items, 50 things you want within the next 1 to 10 years. These are long-range goals. Spend about 12 to 15 minutes on this. The key is to put everything on your list. Now, the key is to take it out of your head and put it on paper. You can dream about what you want, but when you start committing it to paper, now it formalizes information. Now it starts to make a composite of an idea, and ideas can turn into hotels. Ideas can turn into enterprises. Ideas can turn into a fabulous career. We need the information. We need the stimulation. What experiences would you like to have in the next 10 years? Parachute out of an airplane? Star in a movie? Start a new family? Learn to play a musical instrument? Try a new sport? What do you want for your children? That's a whole list in itself. Education. Places you want to take them. Some changes you'd like to make. Some habits you'd like to drop. Some new ones you'd like to acquire. You might make a list of the people you want to meet over the next 10 years, benevolence goals. Maybe you've got a long list of projects you'd like to support. Now, this is not what you think you can do. This is what you'd really like to do. How about your investments, properties? Make a list of your health goals. You've got to have a good physical support system over the next 10 years. How healthy do you want to be? Some goals for your career, your business, some productivity goals. 
A hobby you'd like to start, a new car, become a race driver. What classes would you like to teach? Some of your goals should be personal, of development. The person you wish to become. Develop skills that make you attractive to the marketplace. Develop the temperament and the attitude that makes you attractive to the business world. Because here's what's important. It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. Okay, now we're going to do some things with this list. Here's the next exercise. I want you to look at each item on this list you've made and give each item a number. The number being a 1, 3, 5, or 10. And this is why. I want you to look at an item and say, I think that would take about one year. Another item, you say, I think that would take about three years. Another item, I think that would take five. And another item, looks like that's going to take ten. Give each item now a number what you think it might take to achieve that goal. One, three, five, or ten. Somewhere close, it doesn't have to be exact. That's about a one, that's about a three-year goal, that's about a five-year goal, that's about a ten-year goal. Now, as soon as you've given each item a number, I want you to now go through and count them. How many ones? How many threes? How many fives? How many tens? And then just make a little list of those numbers. How many ones? How many threes? How many fives? How many tens? When you're finished entering your time frames, there should be a fairly balanced distribution of all your goals. If there are many one and three year objectives, but only a few in the 10 year category, maybe you need to think more about what you really want your life to add up to, what kind of life you really want to build over the long run. But if there's a preponderance of 10 year goals and relatively few in the shorter term variety, this may be an indication that you're putting things off, that you're focused too much on where you'll be at the end of the day and not enough on what you can accomplish right now. Keep working on your list, adding and subtracting goals with various time frames until you've created a more or less even distribution. Now comes a really challenging and interesting part. So far, you've just been adding things to the list, but now it's time to start making some selections. Now you're going to start asking yourself what's really important compared to what might just be sort of fun. Choose four goals from each of the four time frames. One year, three years, five years, and ten years. Now you have 16 separate goals. So far, you've only referred to them in shorthand fashion, but now you're going to start seeing them very, very clearly in your mind's eye. You're going to see each goal just as if it were being realized this very minute, and you're going to write down a detailed description of exactly what you see. You intend to open a handmade furniture store in three years? What will the store look like from the street? Out front? Will there be gold leaf lettering on the windows, or will there be a sign hanging over the door instead? How many square feet will the store contain? Will there be a showroom area and a workspace in back, or will the furniture be built at a different location? Do you intend to have any employees, or will you run the business entirely by yourself? Think of all the questions that need to be answered in order to see your goal with absolute clarity. And then write the information down in a notebook or on a piece of paper that will become one of your most important personal possessions. But that's not all. Any goal is a powerful motivator only if there's a powerful reason behind it. Write down your reasons for wanting each goal in the same degree of detail that you used to write your descriptions. If you can't find a clear and convincing reason for each of your 16 goals, do some serious re-evaluating. You may have more whims or pipe dreams than real goals, and now is the time to make that discovery. Keep working on your list until you have 16 clearly envisioned, strongly motivating long-term goals. When the why gets big, powerful, strong, the how seems to be so much easier. Without a strong enough why, the how seems to be too difficult, almost to accomplish. Say, how do you manage your time? You get a book on the subject. You do something to manage your time if it's worth it. If it's not worth it, why would you bother studying the art of managing your time if it really doesn't matter? But if it really mattered in the accomplishment of your goals and why you wish to accomplish, you can do anything. You can get up any hour, read any book, take any class, make any change, develop any skill. I mean, you can do it all. When the why starts to grow, the how gets simple. Maybe one of your goals was to have a $1 million home on the hill overlooking Snake River Valley. Okay, that'd be a good goal, a $1 million dollar home. That'd be wonderful, but what for? 
So now, jot this down. Purpose is stronger than object. The object would be the house, and that's a worthy goal to go for the object of the house. But here's a stronger goal, the purpose for the $1 million home. So if you've got that line, it's one of my best for the whole day. Purpose is stronger than object. It's okay to have plenty of objects to go for on your goal list, but always keep asking yourself the question. And sometimes, it's good to just write it out. Here's why I want this money. Here's why I want this place. Here's why. And you start developing those reasons, and I'm telling you now, this starts to become incredibly powerful. Okay, now here's the next exercise. I want you to look now at the whole list that you've written in the exercises we've done. Now, I want you to answer this question. What kind of person must I become to achieve all I want? Now, we've got two things working. What you become helps you to achieve, and what you achieve helps you to become. And the more you become, the more you can achieve. And the more you achieve, the more you can become. Knows which affects the other the most. Your concept of the person you think you must become to achieve what you want. This is time for a little truth here. Maybe you need to become much wiser than you are at the moment. You need to become stronger. You need to have better health. Maybe you need a little coaching to really become the person you want to become. I'm going to have to have some coaching, physical coaching, spiritual coaching, developing skills coaching to be the influence you want to be. You've got to build an incredible reputation. What kind of person must I be to attract all that I want in my life and the people that I want and the opportunities that I want? You may find that some of your goals you thought, at first glance, were important or not important after all. Do some reflecting, refining, and revising. The point is, right now, try to have approximately four one-year, three five-year, and ten-year goals that you truly believe and that inspire you, that you've sold yourself on. When these goals and the reasons you want to obtain them are each clearly described in a brief paragraph, Transfer this information to a journal or some type of notebook that you can carry with you easily and refer to often. It's essential to set aside some time every week to review all of your goals, to rearrange them, redo them, restructure them, to add goals or to tear up the whole list and start over. Goal setting is not something you do just once, it's a continual process. Also, you must constantly check your progress toward your goals. You don't want to fall too far behind or, worse, lose sight of your important goals. Now, just as important as your long-range goals are your short-range goals, your goals for tomorrow, next week, next month, six months from now, the immediate future. Recall these goals, confidence builders. When you work hard, burn the midnight oil, and accomplish these little things, it builds your confidence to go for your long-range goals. Write down in your notebook or journal all the little things you would like to have or accomplish in the next year. Why you set up this list is up to you. You might want to break it down by week or by month. Set it up in whatever way works well for you. Part of the fun of having a list is being able to check off something as obtained or completed every week. Try to check off at least one thing on your list of short-term goals. And when you're able to check off something major, something on your list of long-range goals, celebrate. Make winning joyful, congratulate yourself. It is very important to celebrate progress. We grow from two experiences. One is the joy of winning, and the other is the pain of losing. Here's what that also means. Make losing painful. Put it on yourself. Set something up, fool around, didn't pull it off. Put it on yourself, and get around people who will help in this area. Hey, don't join an easy crowd. Go where the expectations are high, where the pressure to perform is high. It's how we grow. Review what you've written at times and keep track of your progress toward these objectives. Above all, persevere. Goal setting is a very important first step, but goal achievement is a continuous lifelong process. That's what makes it so challenging. That's also why it's so extremely rewarding to finally attain your long-term goals. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to this extraordinary journey of self-discovery and achievement. Today, I want to share with you timeless wisdom on how to set goals and, more importantly, how to achieve those goals. Now, let me start by saying that setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. You see, the power of goals lies in their ability to transform our dreams into a tangible reality. But how do we go about setting goals that are not merely wishes but powerful beacons to guide us towards success? 
First and foremost, let's understand that goals give us direction. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. The first principle in goal setting is clarity. Be crystal clear about what you want. Define your dreams with such precision that they become like a vivid painting in your mind. The more vivid and detailed the picture, the stronger the pull. Imagine you're an architect designing the blueprint for your life. What kind of house do you want to build? What materials will you use? How many rooms will it have? The more specific you are, the better your chances of creating something magnificent. Now, once you set your goals, it's time to commit to them. Commitment is the bridge between your goals and your achievements. Many people set goals, but they lack the commitment to see them through. Commitment means doing the things you said you would do long after the mood you set it in has left you. It's about creating habits that align with your goals and staying disciplined even when faced with challenges. Remember, success is not convenient. It doesn't happen overnight, and it certainly won't happen if you're not committed to the journey. It's not the wind that determines your destination, but the set of your sail. Commitment is that set of your sail steering you toward the achievement of your goals. Next, let's talk about the power of visualization. Visualization is the mother of manifestation. See yourself in possession of your goals. Feel the emotions associated with the accomplishment. The mind cannot distinguish between a real and an imagined experience. So when you vividly visualize your success, you're programming your mind for victory. Think of it like this. Before a building is erected, it exists in the mind of the architect. Your goals are no different. The more you can see it in your mind, the more likely you are to hold it in your hand. Visualization fuels motivation, and motivation is what keeps you going when the going gets tough. Now, let's address the crucial role of action. Goals without action are merely daydreams. You can have the most beautiful map in the world, but it won't take you anywhere if you don't start moving your feet. Action is the bridge between your goals and reality. You don't have to take massive action from the start but you do have to take consistent, meaningful steps toward your goals. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Break down your goals into manageable tasks and focus on completing them one by one. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Don't underestimate the power of consistent action. It's the secret sauce that turns dreams into accomplishments. As you embark on this journey, expect challenges. Challenges are not there to stop you, they're there to strengthen you. Consider them as the resistance in a workout, they're necessary for growth. The road to success is often paved with setbacks, but it's not the setback that defines you, it's how you respond to it. Adopt a mindset of resilience. Every failure is a stepping stone to success. Learn from your mistakes, adjust your approach, and keep moving forward. Surround yourself with positive influences. Your environment has a profound impact on your mindset and, consequently, your ability to achieve your goals. As I always like to say, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Evaluate your circle and ensure it's filled with individuals who inspire, challenge, and support your journey. Additionally, invest in personal development. The more you learn, the more you earn. Set aside time each day for self-improvement. Read books, attend seminars, listen to podcasts. Feed your mind with knowledge that empowers you to reach new heights. Remember, formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Let me begin by saying this. The greatest project you will ever work on is yourself. Your personal development is not a destination but a continuous journey, and the rewards that come from investing in yourself are limitless. Now, why is personal development so crucial? Well, let me paint a picture for you. Imagine you have a field, and in that field, you plant the seeds of potential. These seeds represent your talents, your skills, and your abilities. But here's the catch. They won't grow on their own. They need the right environment, care, and attention to reach their full potential. Your personal development is the sunlight, water, and nutrients that these seeds require to flourish in the world. We live in a world where change is constant. The only way to navigate through the winds of change is by growing and adapting. Your personal development equips you with the tools and resilience needed to face life's challenges. As I always say, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Personal development is the vehicle that will take you from where you are to where you want to be. 
Now, let's talk about the power of mindset. Your mind is like fertile ground, ready to receive the seeds you plant. If you fill it with negativity, doubt, and limitations, that's what will grow. But if you cultivate a positive, empowered mindset, you'll reap a harvest of success and abundance. Working on your personal development is about tending to the garden of your mind. Weeding out negativity and planting the seeds of belief, discipline, and vision. In the journey of personal development, setting and achieving goals plays a pivotal role. Goals give you direction and purpose. They are the milestones that mark your progress and keep you focused on your destination. Without personal development, your goals may remain distant dreams. It's through self-improvement that you acquire the skills, knowledge, and habits necessary to turn those dreams into reality. Now, let me share a profound truth with you. You cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction. Personal development is about making small, consistent changes that compound over time. It's the commitment to becoming a better version of yourself, day after day, year after year. The journey may be challenging, but the rewards are immeasurable. I often say, don't wish for fewer problems, wish for more skills. Life is not about avoiding challenges, but about developing the capacity to overcome them. Personal development builds your capacity. It's about acquiring the skills and knowledge to navigate the complexities of life successfully. Remember, the challenges you face are not obstacles. They're opportunities for growth and learning. Now, let's talk about the ripple effect of personal development. As you work on yourself, you become a source of inspiration and motivation for those around you. Your growth becomes a beacon of possibility, showing others what can be achieved through dedication and self-discipline. Your success is not just yours, it's a gift to the world. By working on your personal development, you contribute to the collective growth and upliftment of society. In the words of the great Zig Ziglar, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. The journey of personal development begins with a single step, a decision to invest in yourself. It's not about where you start, it's about where you're determined to go. So ask yourself, what kind of person do I want to become? What are my dreams, and what am I willing to do to make them a reality? Remember, success is not something you pursue, it's something you attract by the person you become. Your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. If you want to change your life, start by changing yourself. Work on your attitude, your skills, your habits, and your mindset. As you grow, so will your circumstances. My friends, the key to a fulfilling and successful life lies in your commitment to personal development. It's the foundation upon which your dreams are built. As you embark on this journey, keep in mind the words of the great philosopher Socrates. The unexamined life is not worth living. Take the time to examine your life, set meaningful goals, and work tirelessly on becoming the person you are destined to be. I challenge you to make personal development a non-negotiable part of your daily routine. Read books, attend seminars, seek mentors, and never stop learning. As you invest in yourself, you'll discover untapped potential, overcome limitations, and achieve heights you never thought possible. Thank you, and may you live a life of abundance and purpose.